I'm in Norwich, Vermont in the United States, standing near a house that is made of straw. Although you wouldn't know it from inside or outside, this house is filled with the dried stalks of wheat between the inside walls and the exterior siding. Except that the walls are thicker to allow for more straw between the walls, you might not be able to easily tell that this house is different from most other houses in this region of New England in the United States. So Franny and Aaron tell me, what is a straw bell house? How do you explain it to people when they say to you, what, you live in a straw bell house? Well, uh, what we usually tell them is um, the, the walls of the house are constructed of bales of straw that are stacked like bricks. Um, so if you can envision a brick wall, just envision really giant bricks made of straw. And then they have cement stucco on the outside and gypsum plaster on the inside. The reason is, well, mostly for insulation value and because it's a local natural resource. Okay, those were some points that we've brought up, that it's a local resource and it might not use as much fossil fuel as making certain synthetic insulation material. But there are some downsides, right? It's a lot thicker. Your walls are a lot thicker than a typical house? Yeah, they're, they're probably most of two feet thick, but that's not necessarily a downside if uh, you plan for it, that we have nice deep window sills that you know, give a nice shadow and light. So other than the building material, and it's a well-insulated house, tell us some other features about your house that make it a low environmental impact house. The, the poles, the structure, is wood that we cut here, mostly, not all of it. Um, it's, the rest of the house is just wood. We have very little synthetic material in the house. It has some passive solar design. It has, um, uh, it's off-grid, has f photoelectric power and uh, solar hot water. And you heat primarily with wood? Exclusively with wood at this point. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's great. Yeah. So you have both solar PV and solar thermal. Tell what's the difference? So the, the solar PV uh, is photovoltaic and that is actually how we generate electricity from the sun. And in our case, um, we have solar panels, which then feed into a battery bank, and then the um, electric systems in the house run off the battery bank. The solar thermal is um, the solar hot water. Okay. And what about your decision to be off the grid? That's also a, a serious decision, well, or you had no choice. It was just too far to the electrical transmission well, lines. Well, we had a choice, but, but really, the, the, because we're far from the power on this site, um, the system paid for itself by not having to put in seven electrical poles. That's another th another question people have is, do you have to do without conveniences? Right. Do you, you know, is it a hardship in a sense? Are you, um, and we always say, well, we, you know, we have computers and t we have a TV, we have a dishwasher, microwave, a dishwasher, <laughs> you know, I mean, not really. We feel like it's good to point out to people that it actually is, is not a hardship to live in a house that's more energy efficient. So what made you want to build a straw bell house or what other kinds of considerations were you weighing when you ended up with this choice? Well, let's see, when we were initially uh, thinking about building a house, I had already had some experience um, living in a, in a house, a demonstration house that, for renewable energy um, in California. And we had gotten interested in straw bell as a, um, uh, a, a building, um, a, a type of construction that would um, have low impact and also would be appropriate in a cold climate. So that was one of the things that propelled us towards straw bell was the insulation value. Yeah, I think looking for a natural insulation product. And here we are in New England, have to have insulation, no question about that. Don't like fiberglass. There wasn't any sort of recycled denim bats available at the time. So there weren't a lot of options. And when you think about a straw bale wall, there's lots, there's lots that's appealing about it. And as soon as we started to consider it, I think it just became, that's what we're gonna do. One of the things I really like in my imagination about the house is that when this house falls down, there isn't going to be anything that isn't just going to rot away and disappear. It'll be a little pile of cement stucco. So and it's a compostable, it's biodegradable house. It's a compostable house. <laughs> it is. That's one of the things I really like about it. Well, Franny, Aaron, thank you very much for talking so to us. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Yeah, thank you thanks for, for having us over. Yeah.